Wind farms are as common in Iowa as cornfields. 57% of the state's energy comes from the wind turbines that dot the open landscape there. But providing that kind of clean wind energy to densely populated urban areas is another matter entirely. Off the coast of Virginia, a novel solution is underway, a large-scale, out-of-sight wind power plant with structures built deep into the seabed and nearly as tall as the Eiffel Tower. Kerry Sanders takes us there for our Sunday Spotlight in the NBC News series Climate Challenge, The Extremes. Man has harnessed Mother Nature's breezes throughout history, but what we found during our journey from Norfolk, Virginia, past the U.S. Navy base, 27 miles from shore, is well beyond what any Dutch farmer in the 12th century could have imagined. Dominion Energy, Virginia's largest electric utility, began with just two, but soon it will become 180 pollution-free wind generators and possibly a blueprint for the future. Tornado! This, as climate scientists say, there is a direct cause and effect between carbon pollution and extreme weather. They all tell us this is code red. Dominion Energy believes the pollution-free wind farm here, more than a decade in the planning, will be a small part of eliminating carbon emissions when it comes fully online in just five years. This is the largest uh, offshore wind farm currently being developed in the United States. So we're all working together because we know this is important. So this is not an experiment. No, this is most assuredly not an experiment. Out here, the propellers spin about 40% of the time. And when this is all done, it's estimated one revolution of a propeller will provide enough energy to power a house for a full day. Now, before you conclude, free wind, no pollution, finally a solution. There's this. Wind is free, but this is not free electricity. Correct. It costs money to build a project like this, billions of dollars. But, as you point out, the fuel source is free. So as we operate these plants over the course of decades, we're not going to have to pay money to buy coal or to buy natural gas as we would at a more traditional uh, power plant. So if you have 180 wind turbines out here, does that necessarily mean the coal-fired plant closes? It does not necessarily mean that. Engineer Diego Tapia switched his job from Dominion's nuclear plant to wind power after his two-year-old daughter was born. Do you feel an obligation to your, to your daughter? I think we feel obligated to our planet. Civil engineers say one key to growing offshore wind power relies on the president's much debated infrastructure bill, which sets aside $9 billion to modernize power lines that in some cases were built when Thomas Edison was still alive. Our existing grid is not capable of adding in, interjecting renewable energy, whether it be a wind farm from the plains or whether it be an offshore wind farm off the east coast. We don't have the grid that can handle that capability today. Offshore wind in the early stages of becoming a significant power source on both the east and west coasts. Now waiting to see which way the wind blows in Congress on the infrastructure bill. For Sunday Today, Kerry Sanders off the coast of Virginia. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.